I started a sneaker collection with just a $20 bill, and now I'm gonna buy, sell, and trade my way up to a pair of $20,000 Nike Max. And in today's episode, I pick up almost an entire sneaker collection. But before we dive into today's video, I want to let you all know about the very first Apothecary drop of 2022. I know it's crazy, it's already 2022, I can't get over it. So if you're not familiar with Apothecary, Apothecary is the sock brand that I started last year, and over the last year, we have been blown away by the support that you guys have shown us. And finally, after our holiday break, we're starting off the year right with the collection that I am so excited for. And that collection is our brand new camo sock collection, which also features reflective Apothecary logos across the shin, which I think is so sick. This collection the collection comes in four different colorways. You've got a real tree colorway with the reflective logo like I mentioned. You've got a blue colorway. You've got a red, brown, and orange colorway. And of course, you've also got a green and gray colorway. And all four of these colorways are dropping this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Apothecary.com, which I've made sure to leave a link to in the description below. And if you're afraid you're gonna miss the drop because these socks do tend to sell out pretty quickly, you can follow us on Instagram, which I've also left a link to in the description below. I don't know how it took us this long to drop camo socks because it's one of our most requested designs we're finally dropping them on Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, so if you guys want to grab them, make sure to hit up apothecary.com. But now let's dive right back into the video. First of all, thank you so much for tuning in to the very first $20 sneaker collection episode of 2022. As I always say though, if you're new to the series or maybe new to the channel, which by the way, thank you for stopping by, I definitely recommend starting from the beginning of this series because you'll be able to see everything that led up to this point by clicking the link in the description below or at the top of the screen. But to fill you all in on where we were at at the end of last week's episode, we finished off the week with the sneaker collection fund of $1,028.68. And not only that, we had also unboxed some pretty crazy grails that I had gotten in trades over the last couple weeks. But uh, I do have to tell you all that um, we don't have those sneakers anymore. And it's not because we sold them, it's because we traded them for stuff that's even better. Now in order to keep the surprise for next week's episode, because I don't think I get the sneakers in until the end of this week or the beginning of next week, I'm not going to tell you guys what I traded or what I traded them for, but I will tell you how much I spent in overall trade block fees. So in total, I spent $288.26 on trade block over the last week. Now not all of that was trade block fees, I did add, I think it was $200 on top of a trade that I was doing and that's why the trade block fees seem so high. I think I only spent about $88.26 on actual trade block fees, but uh, that got me three trades, three trades that I'm really excited about and three trades that I will unbox for you guys in next week's episode if they all come in. I think at least two of them have already shipped, one of them I'm still waiting to see if it got authenticated, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. So after all of that trade block trading, we are left with a sneaker collection fund of $740.42, which I'm not going to lie is not a huge amount of money, especially since I don't have really any sneakers in the sneaker collection because I traded them all away. So uh, hopefully it all works out and uh, we get some really great sneakers to supplement what we spent. The good news is though, we did have two sales over the last week, which I know is not a lot of sales, but the sales that we did make ended up having pretty great net profits. So the first pair that was sold were the Air Jordan 3 denims that we picked up from Plato's Closet last week. That was the pair that we actually grabbed through the Instagram post, which I still kind of can't believe that ended up working out for us. I'm really stoked on that pickup. We grabbed those shoes for $22.50, which is an insane same price, especially for a pair of shoes that was in great condition except for the insole. Other than that, the shoe was basically brand new. So I ended up accepting an offer for those on eBay for 140 bucks, and after shipping fees, we were able to add $159.09 .09 back into the sneaker collection fund. And I know that seems like a lot for eBay to charge for shipping. I have no idea why they decided to charge that much because in the end, I think shipping only cost me like 16 bucks. So I'm not sure exactly what was going on there, but because of that, we were able to add an extra almost $19 to the sneaker collection fund, which seems like a lot. Then again, we didn't have to subtract fees from the sale because it went through eBay's authentication program, which means there are no fees, at least as of right now, that's changing on January 19th. But at the end of the day, I'm not mad about it. It just seems like a little bit of an oversight on eBay's part. But after all was said and done, we ended up with a pretty incredible net profit of $136.59. That's really insane, especially because the shoes only cost me $22.50. The second pair that sold was actually a pair that I had traded for last week, and that was the Air Max One Sketch to Shelves. So I ended up accepting an offer of 150 bucks on eBay for this pair of shoes, and after shipping fees, I was able to add a much more reasonable $151.29 back into the sneaker collection fund. So the net profit on this pair of shoes was a little bit harder to calculate because I traded for it, so what I ended up doing was taking the trade block fees that I paid, and the amount that I paid for the pair of sneakers, which I ended up trading, and I divided that by three because I got three different pairs of sneakers, and I think that came out to around 50 bucks. So subtracting the $50, which I'm calling the purchase price, from the gross profit 
profit that we made on this pair of shoes, we are left with a net profit of $101.29, which again is pretty incredible. So after all of those sales, we now have a sneaker collection fund of $1,050.80. And just off net profit alone, which is not the total amount that we added back into the sneaker collection, but the amount that we actually made, we added like $237 back into the sneaker collection fund, which is insane for just two sales. So obviously I'm incredibly happy with those sales, but I think this just goes to show that when I spend more time focusing on buying, I end up making a lot more money than I would if I just bought everything. Also, I did want to mention if you didn't already hear, eBay is actually adding seller's fees to sneaker sales over $100, whereas before they weren't doing that because they were offering free authentication, I guess just to get the ball rolling. And now that they have enough people actually using their service, they're starting to charge for it, which honestly kind of sucks because it's going to take 8% out of our profit. But at the same time, it was gonna happen, it was inevitable. They said it from the beginning, they said after a while they were gonna start charging, so I knew it was gonna happen, but um, for the last six months, we've been pretty much skating by with barely any fees, which was awesome. But now we're just gonna have to start dealing with fees, and they're not as bad as GOAT or StockX, they're like a couple percentage points less, but um, it still kinda sucks. But if you guys wanna hear more about that, I've actually got a video in the works, sort of talking about all the different services and what they do, so stay tuned for that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and uh, that should be coming out probably by the end of the month. We'll see. But with that said, let's dive right into this week's thrifting. So the first stop of the week was Plato's Closet. And as usual, I made my way right to the back of the store first because that's where all the sneakers are. So the first pair that I found was this pair of Air Jordan 10s. It had been lightly worn and it came in a GS size. It was priced pretty well and I felt like I could flip it for a decent profit, so I decided to grab them. Right next to them, I found a pair of Adidas Ultra Boost 19s. The boost was still very white. The outsole had no dirt. The only thing that was worn on them was the primate. It had a little bit of dirt on it, but that was about it. Next was a pair of Air Jordan 12s, again in a grade school size. I'm assuming someone just dropped off their grade school collection because I found a bunch of grade school Air Jordans and they were all pretty decent colorways. On the other side of the aisle, I found a pair of Air Jordan 2s, again in a similar size. They were the OG Chicago colorway, an awesome sneaker, one that I definitely would have kept if it had been in my size. And then I came across a pair of Pharrell Tennis Hues, a shoe which has not done well for me in the past, so definitely a shoe that I was going to leave. And then the final pair that I found was this pair of Air Jordan 7s. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I went there last uh, last week and they didn't have anything, but this week yeah, they got some decent was, stuff, so I'm definitely yeah, I stoked on it. I watch your videos all the time. Yo, time. thank you so much, man. I really can appreciate I get, it. Can I have a picture? Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Dude, I always check on eBay like when I'm yeah, when I'm not yeah, sure. Like I just I just look it up real quick yeah, just to make sure the price is... Yeah. How do you how do you look it up? Because I usually just like check the... Uh, it's the number on the uh, inside of the tongue. On the, I don't know what it is on Feelers, but it's probably that number right there. Oh, yeah, you just type that in and then yeah. Okay, so guys, I got a lot of really, really crazy stuff to start off the week. I mean like bags of crazy, crazy stuff. It seems like people are just selling their stuff after Christmas which I guess makes sense, but a lot of it has definitely been worn. In fact, all of it's been worn, so it's not like they just got it for Christmas, but maybe they grew out of it, things like that. So I got this uh, pair of Ultra Boost, Ultra Boost 20s or 19s, I believe, in great condition, size 10 and a half. Really stoked on that. Got some Air Jordan 10s, barely worn. This is the first pair that I found that I, I couldn't believe that I found it, and I was like, okay, if there's this, then there's gotta be more. And then I found something even cooler, which I'm really stoked on, and that's this pair of OG 2s, size six. They're all like size five and a half, size six. Um, we've got a pair of Air Jordan 12s, and then finally, a pair of Air Jordan 7s, again, in really great condition. So I'm stoked on all these, got them all for an insanely good price. I'll let you guys know about that a little bit later on in the video. But um, yeah, Plato's Closet came through. So for the first stop of the week, that's pretty solid. I went back to Plato's Closet a couple days later to see if I could strike gold again, but unfortunately, I wasn't really finding anything in terms of sneakers. I did, however, find this Adidas track jacket. It was a women's track jacket that one of the employees had pointed out to me. I decided to grab it. It was brand new. It still had tags on it, and it was something that, for 20 bucks, I felt like I could flip for at least double what I bought it for. At least that's what I'm hoping. But unfortunately, other than that, this Plato's Closet was tapped out for the week. Next, I decided to hit up a Nike outlet in South Jersey, and the first place that I go in Nike outlets is usually the hash wall, because that's where a lot of the awesome returns are. And the first pair that I found is this pair of Air Maxes. This is the Los Angeles Air Max that I believe dropped maybe three or four months ago. I think it might have been relatively limited compared to other Air Max releases, but there wasn't a lot of resale value there, and I'm assuming what happened was someone bought it expecting to resell it, they couldn't sell it, so they just returned it to the outlet. I found a couple Nike running sneakers that featured Air Units and Zoom X. These shoes are incredibly comfortable underfoot. However, the pair that surprised me the most was this pair. Unfortunately, it was in a grade school size, but this shoe can usually resell for maybe $50 to $100 over retail price if you grab them in the OG colorway in a men's size. 
Unfortunately, this one had definitely been worn and it didn't have a lot of resale value because of the size. So even though it's a shoe that I kind of want for my own personal collection in my size, not a shoe I could pick up today. A kind of interesting find was this pair of furry Converse's. I've never seen anything like this before. I have no idea what these are. Kind of look like Jeremy Scott's, but uh, not something I wanted to grab. After that, I decided to walk up and down the aisles, and the first pair that caught my attention was this pair of Nike Blazer Mids. Now, this shoe is sort of their recycled variant of the Nike Blazer Mid, and what's interesting is that they gave this shoe a very sort of off-white deconstructed aesthetic. There is actually a colorway that looks even more like the off-white Nike Blazers, but this colorway wasn't bad. Unfortunately, it doesn't have much resale, so even though it's priced well, 80 bucks, definitely not a pickup. Another interesting find was this pair of Nike Air Max Zephyrs, a pair that I thought was supposed to be a much bigger release because it had an Air bubble on the upper which is something they've never done before but turns out Nike didn't really push this shoe it didn't sell very well and uh, it just kind of is relegated to the outlets it's an interesting sneaker and one that I kind of wanted to grab just totally out of interest but not worth it for the collection and then the final shoe that I found that actually was kind of surprising were these two pairs of Nike Adapt shoes. Now I forget the exact name of these shoes, but these shoes released either at the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020. I don't remember exactly when the release date for these was, but these shoes are purely lifestyle sneakers that feature the self-lacing or auto-lacing system. They are incredibly high for some reason, like when you step into these shoes you're standing like two inches off the ground. It's a really weird sneaker, I've never seen anyone wear these in real life, and uh, there's no resale value there, so for 300 bucks there was no way I was grabbing them. Okay, so I I thought I was done recording for the week, but I get this notification on Instagram saying that Plato's Closet actually reserved a pair of shoes for me that I had asked them to hold like a week ago, but apparently the person who had it on hold never picked it up, and then there was like four other people who just hadn't picked it up. So they hit me up and said it was on hold for me, and I am uh, very excited about it because it's an incredible pair of shoes, and uh, it comes in at a great price. So I'm gonna go grab it right now, and I'll show you guys as soon as I get back. Thanks so much, I appreciate it. Have a good one. Okay, so we are back from our crazy thrifting adventure. Obviously, I picked up a lot of stuff from Plato's Closet over the last couple days. I'm really stoked on all these pickups, and I wanted to just go through all of them and show you guys what I picked up and uh, give you guys sort of estimated pricing that I'm hoping to grab from some of these shoes. Before we get into the shoes, though, I do want to show you guys sort of a non-sneaker pickup that is part of the sneaker collection fun, but uh, is not a pair of sneakers. And that is this uh, Adidas tracksuit. So this is actually brand new. I grabbed this at Plato's Closet for 20 bucks. It's priced at $80 brand new. And I have no idea how this is gonna do. Um, I really have no clue. So I'm gonna list it on eBay. Hopefully it makes some money. Hopefully we make our $20 back at least. Figured, you know, 20 bucks is not a bad amount to gamble with. So hopefully we'll make even more money. I'm hoping we make like 50 or 60 off this. But we'll just have to wait and see. Honestly, I haven't even looked this up on eBay yet. So. Uh, it's a total risk, so we'll see what happens with that. I'll keep you guys posted next week on if that sells. But next up, we've got that crazy Air Jordan collection pickup that I got that I spent $85 on, and uh, I figured why don't we just go through it together and see uh, generally how much profit I expect to make. So the first pair that we picked up is this pair of Ultra Boost 19s in a size 10 and a half. I actually grabbed these for 22 bucks, and they are in incredibly decent condition, especially for the price. The only problem that I found with them, because the boost, I mean, is almost brand new, is that the, uh, the prime knit is a little bit dirty around the toes. If that's the worst thing about these sneakers, I'm not that mad. In fact, if you look at the inside of the shoe, the boost text is even still in there. It looks like the shoe was maybe worn once, which is kind of nuts. But checking on eBay, the one pair that sold recently was a women's size seven, and it sold for 65 bucks. So this is a size seven and a half men's. It's a better size, I think and uh, I think I can get at least 65 bucks for it. So subtracting the 22 bucks, you got a net profit of around $40 is what I'm hoping for. So uh, not a bad pickup. Next up, we've got these Air Jordan 7 Pure Monies in a youth, a 5Y size. So I got these for 15 bucks. They're in pretty decent condition. The only problem that I found so far, other than them being slightly worn, is that the price tag actually left some gunk on the side. So I've got to get that off with the rejuvenator. That kind of sucks. But other than that, for 15 bucks, not a bad pickup. In fact, the suede still feels excellent on these shoes and the outsole is barely worn. In fact, all of the Jordans that we picked up seem to be about the same size, so it seems like someone actually just dropped off their kids' Jordan collection or maybe their own Jordan collection, which is kind of nuts because maybe they grew out of them. But it's like a lot of really great sneakers and uh, I don't know, they're all in great condition, so I'm really happy with this. So let me check sold listings. So recently, pairs that have sold have sold for between $50 and $90. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what to make of that because I mean, it's such a broad range. So I'm guessing, let's just go in the middle. Let's cut it right down the middle. Let's say uh, 60 bucks. 
that's not right down the middle, but it's, I think it's gonna lean more towards 60 bucks. So if we sell these for 60 bucks, we'll have a net profit of $45, which is what I'm hoping for. So $45 net profit on these is not bad, especially for a $15 investment. Next up, we've got these Air Jordan 12s. These are a size 5Y, again, which makes sense. And if you guys are wondering how I'm looking these up on eBay, I'm actually searching the style number, which is sort of just to the right of the size, right there, that number right there. In this case, it is DB5595404. So if you type that in on eBay, the shoe's gonna come up and uh, it's pretty easy to find them that way. So let me type that in really quickly and see sort of what we're working with. I think I grabbed these for 1750 is what I paid for these, which again, not a bad price. It's actually the most expensive of all the Jordans that I grabbed, if I can remember correctly, which is surprising because I wouldn't have thought that, but apparently that's how they priced it. So again, it's kind of a mixed bag for these Indigo Stone 12s. Um, brand new, they go for between 170 to 200 bucks, but used, I mean, it's anywhere from like $30 to $70. Um, I'm expecting these to sell for like 40 to 50 bucks. Let's say I'm expecting a net profit of like 30 bucks. So not great, um, not terrible but not a bad pickup. Also, if you guys wanna grab any of the shoes that I'm talking about or any of the stuff that I've talked about, you can grab it on my eBay store, which is linked in the description below, or even my trade block account, which again, linked in the description below. But next up, we have a pair of Air Jordan 10s, which I grabbed for $15. Again, I believe it is a size 5Y. This is the Orlando Magic colorway in grade school size, 5Y, like I mentioned. And from what I can tell, it sells between 30 to 50 bucks or 30 to 60 bucks. So I'm gonna guess 40 bucks and uh, say that we're probably gonna make like a $25 net profit on this. So not terrible, not great, but uh, still probably worth the pickup, especially because I don't really have to do much cleaning on it and it should sell pretty quickly. And then the final pair of Jordans that we picked up from this uh, youth collection is this pair of Air Jordan 2s in the OG colorway in a size six. Now this shoe is definitely a lot older than any of the other shoes that we picked up, but because of um, the off-white Air Jordan 2, I think that there is probably going to be a little bit of hype around this colorway in particular. It's not a low top, but uh, it is still a great classic Jordan model. So let me check the price on this guy. So there's only one pair of these available on eBay right now. It's a size 5.5. This is the 2010 Air Jordan 2 Chicago's. Um, very similar condition to this. Let me see if there's any sold listings. So there are no recent sold pairs, and the only pair that's listed is listed for 70 bucks. Obviously, it's not really selling, so I will probably list these for 50 I think. And I bought these guys for 15 bucks, so uh, I'm hoping to come out with like a $30, $35 net profit. This is honestly my favorite shoe out of the bunch. I just love this colorway. And if it could fit me, I would have kept it. But unfortunately, I can't. It's 6Y, and uh, I honestly don't know how well this will move. I have no clue. So we'll just have to wait and see. And then the final pickup of the week is actually... Probably one of the best pickups I've ever had. It's kind of crazy to say that because we've been doing this for 29 episodes at this point. But it's actually a pair of barely used Yeezy 700 MNVNs. So the way that I grabbed this, I already mentioned. I got it off Plato's Closet's Instagram. What they do is they post pictures of stuff that they got in store that are like valuable and that people want to come in and see. And uh, you can comment hold underneath those pictures. And if you're the first person to comment hold, they'll save them for you. Um, and if that person doesn't come pick them up, they'll kind of just go down the list. And I was like fifth on the list and apparently no one else picked up this shoe, which is crazy to me because these were priced at 125 bucks. So uh, I got the notification. I drove right over to Plato's Closet and I grabbed them. And the best part was I actually had a 20% off coupon. So I got these for $100. And these are a size 12 Yeezy 700 MNVN in the blue tint colorway. So a pretty recent colorway. And uh, based on this little tag right here, I think they're actually from GOAT. So they're authentic, or at least I'm assuming they're authentic. But um, let's check them out, see how they look. Crazy. And uh, what's crazy about these is that these are barely worn. Barely, barely worn. They have a little bit of dirt on the toe, which I might be able to get out with some rejuvenator. I'm gonna try and do that. They smell amazing for some reason. I don't know why they smell so good, but they smell great. Size 12, and uh, I mean, probably worn twice. I mean, there's literally no heel drag, there's nothing. I mean, these shoes are immaculate, it's crazy. And actually, there we go. There is the GOAT information. I grabbed these for 100 bucks. I can't believe that. Retail is like two something. And I checked on eBay, and I think these sell for around 230 is what I'm seeing, even in used condition in a size 12. So uh, I think I'm actually gonna list these on trade block. So if you guys wanna trade for these, give me a follow on trade block at Seth Fowler. But this shoe is in such good condition and I got it for such a good price. I just don't wanna sell it, I wanna trade it. I wanna get the most value possible for this guy because this is like a once in a blue moon situation. No blue tint pun intended. They come with the box, which is like never something that happens, especially with Yeezys that you buy from Plato's Closet or Buffalo Exchange or whatever. And uh, for some reason, no one else picked these up. It was like five days after the post went live. I have no idea why no one else grabbed these, but uh, I grabbed them. So 
<laughs> it worked out for me. Really happy with all of this week's pickups. It was a lot of pickups. I don't usually grab this much stuff, except for the Black Friday episode. Recently, I've been doing more trading, and next week I've got some really, really crazy trades. I'll let you guys in on a secret. I'll tell you guys what I traded in order to get what I'm getting. So I traded the off-white UNC ones, which is nuts. I got those in for like a day and then I traded them almost immediately. I traded the Fear of God ones and I traded um, some Air Jordan ones. In fact, all my Air Jordan ones. So uh, yeah, we've got um, some really, really insane stuff coming in and I think the uh, the series is gonna start like ramping up even quicker than it was. So really stoked on that. Make sure to stay tuned for next week. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, we're just gonna keep going until we get those mags, and I cannot wait. Oh, and actually, before I forget, I should tell you all what the sneaker collection fund is at. So, as of right now, after all of these pickups, we have a sneaker collection fund of $850.80. Not bad, and especially after you see what I've got coming in next week, it's gonna get crazy. But that pretty much wraps up the episode for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. I would love to know your thoughts on this series and where you think I can improve, so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, if you guys wanna grab any of the Camo Apothecary socks, they drop this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. It's gonna sell out quickly, so if you guys wanna grab it, make sure to be on the website right at 11. It's the best way to do it. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.